If you're using WordPress and you wish to set up a network of sites, there is no need to create multiple separate installations of WordPress on your server. Today, we're going to talk about activating a multi-site network, a feature that allows WordPress to run multiple sites. A multi-site network is a collection of sites that all share the same WordPress installation. This means they can also share plugins and themes. This can make managing multiple sites extremely efficient, especially if you have the need for users to create their own site on your network. This may also make site management more complex for you, so if you don't have a need for this functionality, it's recommended that you leave it alone. To activate multi-site, we're going to follow a few simple steps, but it will require that you have access to your wpconfig.php file on your server. To allow multi-site, open this file and find the part near the bottom where it says, that's all, stop editing. Right above where it says this, we're going to add this line. Save the changes and re-upload this updated file to your server if needed. While you're here, it's very important that you back up your current wp-config file, and if you're running on a Linux-based server, you should be backing up your .htaccess file as well. Put these someplace safe, because if something goes wrong later, you're going to be able to use these files for a fresh start. Once you activate multi-site and set up websites, trying to go back to a single site installation is going to give you a headache, especially if you do not have these files. Go ahead and reopen your WordPress dashboard, and if you're already looking at it in your browser, just hit refresh. Upon loading the dashboard again, you'll notice a new Network Setup link in the Tools menu. The previous step has now enabled this link. Click Network Setup to continue. On this screen, you're shown the network details that you'll need to configure prior to installing multi-site. The first thing you'll need to decide is whether to use subdomains or subdirectories. The subdomain setup will create a domain-based network in which on-demand sites use subdomains, for example, site1.mysite.com or site2.mysite.com. If you choose to use subdirectories, on-demand sites will be created with a path-based network, such as mysite.com slash site1 and mysite.com slash site2. Please note that if you're using the subdomain installation, it's recommended that you turn on wildcard subdomains with your host if they allow it. This will allow all subdomains to be handled by WordPress instead of your host, which is what you'll want if you're using subdomains. This is especially true if you're allowing other users to create blogs seamlessly on your network. Otherwise, without wildcard subdomains, you'll need to manually create each subdomain with your host as well in order for it to work properly with WordPress. Consult your hosting provider for more information on wildcard subdomains. Some providers will allow you to have wildcards and some providers won't. Multisite allows you to create whole new websites with a few clicks and this setup will determine how those sites are created and navigated to. You'll see your server address here, and then you'll have the option to choose your network name. This name is the name given to the entire network of sites, not just one site. Each site within your network will still get its own name. Finally, you can input the admin email address for the network, and then click Install. When this is completed, you're greeted with another screen. If you haven't done it already, take the advice in the yellow banner here and back up your existing unchanged files. I can't stress enough how important it is that you have these saved for later should anything go wrong down the road. We're going to be editing the content of these files now to set up multi-site. Let's follow the steps listed here. First, we're going to add this block of code to our wp-config file, right above the same area we looked for before. I usually place this text directly below the text I added before when enabling multi-site. Then, if you're on a Linux-based server, as I am, you'll also get prompted to use the following code in your .htaccess file. Those with Windows-based configurations will not have a .htaccess file, so don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and open up this file, and replace everything in this file with the text that you see in this box. Once you've done these steps and have re-uploaded the edited files, your multi-site network is properly configured, and you may have noticed that you've been logged out of your site and that you'll need to log in again. 
Once you're back in your dashboard, you'll also notice a new My Sites area in your admin toolbar. Your account is now a super admin, which is an admin of the network and not just individual sites. Users can be administrators of individual sites, but not the entire network. You've now got access to the super admin panel. The super admin panel should be looked at in a very similar way as the normal administrator panels. The only difference here is that you are now changing settings for the entire network. Also, with WordPress multi-site, everything related to adding, editing, or removing themes and plugins will now need to be done in the super admin panel. For more information about WordPress multi-site, visit us online at wpmu.org.